Hey, welcome back guys to part 18 of Black Myth 100% Platinum Walkthrough. From the Bone Vault in the Webbed Hollow, we're just going to head forward and engage this upcoming boss. Yes, there's about three boss fights in this video. And the one at the very end is very gimmicky and I don't really like him that much. You'll find out what I mean when we get to him. But yeah, this one, the Centipede Guay. It's not too difficult to defeat, I don't think. But yeah, just do the normal setup. Use your um, transformation. Then your spirit attack. And then, of course, go into clone and use your monkeys and the mobilize and just unleash onto him. There will be one attack he does where he kind of spawns loads of little smaller centipedes which will just roll towards you. And when that happens, you just want to keep kind of rolling out the way to avoid him. Because if you stand there still, they can quite easily stun lock you and kill you mega quickly, guys. You know when he's going to do the attack because he kind of screams like this. Yes, so he's summoning all his little centipedes. So get ready to dodge them all. So make sure your stamina is full. And yes, here they come. Yes, yeah, so watch out for these. Yes, I have killed. I've died due to them before. It's when I didn't really know the attack and um, I was kind of not expecting it. Just busy attacking the boss as you do. Then all of a sudden all the set of pages roll towards me and TKO'd me. But yeah, once that attack is finished, if he does get a chance to do it. Yeah, just finish him off, guys. I say he's quite an easy boss. Even at my low level. And there we go, pretty much got him. Yeah, the centipede Gwai. So he'll actually drop a spirit as well. So don't run away just yet. Just hang around for a moment, guys, and grab his spirit. Yes, you also get a knot of voidness and a gold tree core from defeating him. Yes, and th this boss at the end, the thing what I don't like about him is the whole arena is kind of got oil around it. It seems to slow you down at times, and um, he has this really long attack in his second phase. It literally goes on for about a minute, and if you, you can actually attack him during the phase, but if you deplete all his H, all his HP, during the phase where he's kind of running around, that attack, you can't kill him. You have to wait for the attack to finish before you can actually attack him one more time and delete him. For some reason, it doesn't let you kill him during that attack animation. And like I say, it goes on for about a minute. So you might kill him right at the start of the animation, but you can't kill him until the end of it. And you might actually die during the attacks. It's very annoying. Um, but yeah, I've got all that to look forward to and more. So go that world cluster. Come back up here and just keep following the linear path. And you want to smash this big egg sack. I don't need to destroy it anymore. But you want to kill this one because you'll find a familiar face inside. I was going to say pretty face, but I had to hold myself back because... Um, Probably not the right word to descri describe this guy. But yeah, the Horus NPC. Rescue him. Exhaust his dialogue, guys. And that should continue his side quest. Yeah, there'll be a little cutscene which you can't skip. So if you just head over and finish his dialogue once the cutscene is finished. Much I'm going to head forward, today. we'll kill a few more minor and more worms and then we'll shortly reach the next no shrine. More. There'll be another purple talisman coming up, it's not too far away. Never heard they say yep, so exhaust all his dialogue. The great thing. I for my mind if none should so um, next week I'll have a guide going up on Wednesday. Uh, sorry, not Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday should be when the series begins for Dead Rising. Deluxe Remaster, which should be a full 100% walkthrough. And I'm hoping to get some guides up for a, a game called Heaven Dust as well. Small indie game, there's Heaven Dust 1 and Heaven Dust 2. I believe they're getting released on the PlayStation next week. Uh, finally, they've been out for a few years now. But they're good kind of, they're good small survival horror uh, Resident Evil type games. Very good. If you played Crow Country, very similar to that, uh, but I do enjoy Heaven Dust a bit more. And Heaven Dust 2 is a great improvement. I mean, Heaven Dust 1 was quite good anyway, but Heaven Dust 2 is a lot better. 
But yeah, they're supposed to be coming out next week, so you can expect some guides for them. So when you've killed this miner and more worms, grab this Jade Luster guys just in that small pond on the left. I'm going to carry on forward, kill a few more. You don't have to kill these, it's up to you. I don't like so I don't think they drop a seed. They drop the withered silkworm ingredients. I guess I'm just hoping to get a few. But yeah, once we get to this next safe point, we're probably not going to kill any more and more worms. You will be able to buy a few of them silkworms from some of the shops. Not many, but there'll be a few there for sale. Yeah, so I'm um, just going to carry on forward a bit more. Okay, a few more of these. Yeah, between this safe point we're going to next and the recent one, there's loads of these and more worms. Probably a good little farming group of these. Start from the safe point we're going to. Run down here, kill all these and more worms. There's about... There's about seven or eight down here. They can teleport back. Run down, kill them all again, teleport back. And that could be like a nice little farm for silkworms. Yeah, it's a snakehead mushroom over here. And there's licorice as well. I didn't mention it, but yeah, I'm, I got it not long after that Jade Lotus we got. Yeah, you did, you did see me get it, but I was too busy yakking away, guys, and didn't actually mention myself getting it. But yeah, continue upwards. Up here, you want to kill these enemies, otherwise they're going to interrupt you when you're trying to interact with the chest here or the purple talisman. So I'm going to kill that enemy, I'm going to loot his chest. This will drop some random materials and a blood off the iron ball. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to kill this enemy next because he's going to stop me from interacting with this purple talisman. Yeah, so this is purple talisman number two. Two more to get. Yeah, just take it off there. Right, there'll be snakehead mushroom around the corner. Yep, there she is. Right, let's go and trigger this safe point. Yep, this will be the Cliff of Oblivion. Yeah, just pluck her pubic hair, guys, and start a bit of incense burning. Right, so um, once you've rested, going to come along here. It's going to be a little boss fight. Oh, it's four boss fights here, not three. I forgot about this little um, hand. Yes, this boss did kill me once, by the way. So you're going to see a very brief edit. Yeah, this is the Buddha's right hand. I wouldn't say this is a mega hard boss, um, but what it tends to do is um, the best time to attack it is after an attack. Because normally after an attack, it'll kind of be stuck in the wall like so or something, or its hands might be stuck on the ground. Because it moves up and down this corridor quite a lot. And you can spend a lot of time just running after it. Yeah, so again, his hand will get normally stuck on the wall or something after an attack. It will have one attack where it will get like a little twinkle. Yes, a little twinkle at the end of its fingertip. It normally like shoots a little um, lightning spark at you. And with that, just be ready to dodge. And yes, another attack where its hands just get stuck in place for a few seconds after finishing the attack. Now, when it gets to about half HP, um, a kind of like spider type enemy is going to come down. Now, to begin with, this enemy will always spit acid to begin with or poison. So if you can get behind it, you've got a good opportunity to get some good damage in. And if you saved up your focus points for that, you can knock him down as well, like I just did. And then just, just unleash onto him, guys, and hopefully, yep, yeah, get rid of him pretty quickly once he turns into that little spider. Yes, that's Buddha's right hand defeated. That will form a bridge for you, so you can get across to the cliff ahead. Yeah, so head along here, guys. I guess that spider part was the other side of the hand. A weird looking enemy. But yeah, come down the cliff. You want to go left. And you want to grab this. Yeah, Celestial Tay Pill. Yes, grab that, guys. And the items that boss would have dropped, by the way. So some random materials, but it will always drop a fine gold thread times one. A past echo times one. And Buddha's right hand. Uh, but once you've got that pill, guys, that Celestial Teal Pill, carry on forward, following the path. And eventually the path will fork. 
Now you need to go right to progress the story. So we're going to go left and grab the optional things along here. And that boss will be coming up soon, which I mentioned a few vi videos back. Which we are not going to fight yet, because he's mega, <laughs> he's mega difficult. A little bit like Yin Tiger. I'm not quite sure which one is worse. Um, but both of them, when you try to fight them, they just, they're crazy. They have massive combos. And they're very difficult. I, I spent a good 30 minutes on him, and I'm still no, close, no closer to beating him. So I figured we'll come back later and make him much easier. Save you wasting that time. So here, guys, is a chest. Yes, in this cave, go right, and you'll find that chest. I think that chest always has cold iron leaves inside. Oh, maybe not, because um, on here, I put refined iron sand. Yeah, that chest, random. So here, you want to go into cloud step, and come across here when the enemies are not attacking, because you can actually get knocked off this, and you will die. And there's no safety barrier either, so make sure you walk straight. So yeah, use cloud step going along there, guys, to grab a wheel cluster. Come on here, go right, grab the licorice. Yes, grab this fragrant jade flower. Yes, come over here, grab this fragrant vine. Over here, grab this fragrant jade flower again, another one. Now up here will be a snakehead mushroom, but it's actually a plant enemy. Yeah, that plant enemy there, I just left it, guys. That will spawn a fungling. Up to you if you want to defeat it. There's a snakehead mushroom there you can take. And they come up the hill slightly along all these kind of chests, I guess, which are not used. Yeah, grab that jade lotus from that small pond. Grab this other snakehead mushroom and then trigger the shrine. So over there, guys, it's that boss, which I said, which is very, very hard. Yellow Long is his name. He only spawns when you've killed the other long enemies, which you have done. So yeah, if you want to fight him, crack on, guys. Give him a go if you want to see what you think about it. But yeah, I'm going to be coming back later. So just make sure you trigger that shrine. We'll walk back a bit later on in the walkthrough. When it's going to be much easier. Now come up the hill. Grab this licorice on the left. And then this fragrant jade flower behind it. Don't go too close to that scorpion enemy. And you shouldn't aggro him. Continue along the path. Then go right. You're coming to this cave. Grab the jade lotus. And at the end here guys. Is an enemy containing a spirit. Now there is a ledge here. This ledge just leads you back down to a previous area. So you don't want to go down there yet. So some other things we need. But apart from that ledge, this path is a dead end. So just coming down here for a spirit. Then we'll go back and we'll take the alternate path. So yeah, it's going to be a few enemies here. So just be careful. You don't get kind of stun locked. And this spirit will give you the puppet tick. Yeah, you get the puppet tick spirit from this guy. You also get a blood off the iron ball. You don't need to worry about saving your mana or anything either. And by the time the next tough enemy comes up, there'll be another shrine. There's not really any other enemies we have to kill between now and the next shrine coming up. Yeah, so puppet tick spirits. So head back guys to where the pond was and now we're going to go right and take the remaining path. There'll be a few more jade lotus in the pond. Just a bit further. Yeah, so you've got a jade lotus over here. And you also got another Jade Lotus over here as well. Yeah, sorry, I think my mic is a little bit too far for me, guys. Just realised, so apologies if I've been a bit quiet up until now. Or if now I'm a bit too loud. Um, but that's where I normally have it. I don't normally get any complaints. So over here, grab this wheel cluster, just near Cliff Edge. That ledge across from us, we've actually already been along there. If you remember the layout and places you may have seen, but you couldn't yet access. Yeah, so continue along here next, go up the ramp, go right, and I'm gonna kill this enemy on the right here. Yes, because you could kill him in one hit if you charge up your attack. It's just one of these weak archer type enemies. Then head along here, guys, and loot this chest. You can grab this fragrant jade flower to begin, or grab it afterwards. Yes, yeah, so this chest will give you, oh, some goodies in this one. So you'll get a random pill, a few random medicines, actually. Yes, that yellow medicine there, that'll be random. You might get something different. But you will get a knot of voidness that is fixed and a blood of the iron ball. Now, once you've got them, 
come back slightly, take the other path, grab this third purple talisman. One more to go. So yeah, grab that. Right, once you got it, now you want to drop down here, guys, and this is going to take you to this world cluster. Yes, and then drop down and you find yourself back near the start of this area. Basically, just after that Buddhist right-hand boss there, so that fork, we went left. This drops you back down to that fork. So now, we've done everything we need to do on the left, other than killing that boss, which we've done it, we're going to do later. So now we're going to take the right path, uh, which we need to go down to um, progress the story. So just continue down here. Yes, and in a second, you want to go through this gap in the wall. Yes, go through this gap in the wall. There'll be a cutscene with all the sisters. Yes, all the yummy sisters there. Right, once you get control back, just carry on following the linear path. There'll be a wheel cluster over here. And yes, we've got two boss fights coming up. Probably 10 minutes of this video is the final two boss fights. Like I said, the final one is quite... It takes quite a while, just due to its attacks. Yes, yeah, so going to continue following the path. We just got a wheel cluster, and a bit further down there should be a chest next. You're down here. No need to kill these enemies. Oh, we've got another. That's actually another boss I forget as well. Now this room's quite annoying. There's a chest, but it's right down here in the kind of little canyon. Um, you want to drop down. You want to go into Cloud Step. I mean, you can try to drop down near to the chest if you want to. I thought I had. I just kind of forgot where it was. But yeah, try to approach this chest with Cloud Step active so you don't have to kill any enemies. I actually triggered it a bit too early and it ran out just by, by the time I reached the chest. But yeah, loot this chest here. This is all that you want in this big open cavern. In this chest, you'll find a gold tree core and a mind core. Always in that one, so you want to make sure you loot it anyway. Then you're going to come back. You're going to keep following the left wall until you go up a ramp and get back to the upper ledge. Then you want to go left at the top and then head to that far kind of illuminated tunnel to leave. Yeah, just make your way along here. That's it. You can kill all the enemies if you want to. And um, we'll come back and do the farming later. And up here, guys, we're going to go through this wall shimmy on the right. There's a very narrow gap in the wall. Um, but if any enemies are nearby, you will not be able to do it. And there is a shrine up ahead, um, but this tunnel does actually lead back to that shrine. So we want to come in here first. Right, I've just killed that nearest enemy, so hopefully I can go, yeah, I can go through it now. Yes, yeah, so this will be meditation spot number three of six. And the name for that one is Cave Depths Lower Hollow. Yeah, that's the name for that meditation spot. Number three of six. Yes, anyway. Once you've got this one. You're going to keep progressing along the path. Do not go back where you just came from. You're going to follow the path through a kind of like upper, tu upper tunnel. And it's going to lead you to a boss. But on the way there, we should be able to drop down to the safe point. Trigger it. And then climb back up where we drop down. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember where the tunnel is. Oh yes, there it is. Yeah, so through here. Past this sniper. Yes, go right. And um, when the cave opens up again just here, there'll be a wall cluster. And drop down, guys, that shrine just below. As you can see, there's a few ledges as you drop down. So you can easily get back up by jumping and pressing heavy attack. So yes, just put in your seeds and rest to recover all your mana and cooldowns and whatnot. And then once you're ready, guys, jump back up. Jump heavy, uh, jump heavy, and another jump followed by another heavy. Continue following the path, and you're going to come across one of the frog bosses. This will be... Uh, Borligulba. Yeah, that's his name. A Borligulba, or something his name is. So, yeah, I'm just going to prep my focus attacks. Run to the side, because if we keep running towards him, we're probably going to get um, stunned by his opening attack. So, if you run to the left or right, that normally works for most enemies. Run to the left or right, you can normally avoid the opening attack. So that can you unleash your charge and just the usual stuff there'll be another shrine before the next boss yes there's another shrine not long after this guy yes 
Yeah, he will cover the area in poison. And I'm quite surprised his health hasn't gone down much so far. I'm sure that will soon change. Yes, that spirit did quite a lot of damage to him. We could probably max upgrade a few spirits by now, guys. But I'm gonna leave them all. I'm gonna leave all the upgrading spirit. I'm gonna leave all the upgrades to the end of the game, I think. So we know exactly what materials we have to play with and what materials we need to save in order to craft everything for the trophies. Because what you don't want to do, you don't want to, I mean, there might be some equipment you have which looks very, very promising at the moment. So you might waste, or you, I won't say waste, but you might consume a lot of good materials on upgrading it. And then you might, later on, you might come across another one, which surprisingly it looks even better than the one you just max upgraded. Um, but you'll start upgrading it and then you realise you don't have enough to max upgrade it and you'll probably kick yourself a little bit. And that's what I don't want to do. So I'd rather just keep things, you know, until we get to the end. And then kind of look at it all then. Have a look at similar builds we can play with. Yeah, so that boss, he'll drop a refined, well, he drop a tadpole. A Buddha's left hand, which I haven't actually wrote down. Can't believe I forgot to write that in the text. Yeah, Buddha's left hand. I'm just thinking, why is all these items picking up? That's not what I've wrote down in the guide. Yeah, so continue following the path, guys. You'll find another two wheel clusters on your way to the next shrine. Uh, just one minute, I'm just editing this document. Yeah, Buddha's left hand. Yes, I hope that's the only appendages we're going to get from the Buddha. Left hand and the right hand is enough. I don't want anything from below his torso. Yes, yeah, so um, this is another shrine, guys. This will be the Hut of Immortality. Yes, Hut of Immortality. So at the moment, this is the only path you can take. So come in here. It's going to get a very easy boss fight. And then back at the shrine, when you beat this guy, it actually opens a new path for you. So yeah, this is Zubai. Basically, that guy who was helping us earlier, it looks like. So yeah, this is a bigger version. He's um, taken one of uh, Mario's mushrooms, I think. So yeah, this is the easiest, the easier version of him. You have to fight him again shortly after, guys, and that is the more difficult one, which is more gimmicky. Yeah, this version is like, it's pretty easy actually. His combos he's using now will be quite similar in the next fight. So try to kind of observe what he's doing as you're attacking him. And just so you're kind of ready for the next fight. His combos do go in a bit longer in the second fight with him. Yeah, almost got him. Yeah, he goes down mega quick. Look at that. I've kind of comboed him. Gave a, a max, almost a maximum combo then. Almost from full health. But yeah, once beaten, like I say, it will reveal a new path. There's nothing to collect in this area. Not that I found I had a good look. I couldn't find anything. Just that boss. So you fight him. Go back to save point, guys. Rest up to um, obviously replenish your mana and everything. Right, and this is a new path. Come up here and interact with the wall, guys, to reach a new area. It's not a new area, I mean it's still kind of, there's no real loading screen. I mean this is the loading screen here. But I mean it's not like a proper loading screen, so I think it's still kind of the same area. So if you do die, you respawn back at the save point, not at the wall shimmy. Yeah, so grab a snake and mushroom guys and approach the lake for a boss fight. So I had to edit this, I did die a few times. You'll normally get a cutscene and then the fight will begin. But whenever you retry this, you'll see that kind of mist floating about in the air. And you can run in with a charge attack, run to the side, he'll, dry, he'll dive down, do a lunging attack, and then you can unleash your charge up attack. Now, I normally use my transformation on him, on this first phase, but do not use any other mana. Yes, save all your other, you want to try to knock him into a second phase, which would be half HP, uh, but you want to try and make sure you've got most of your mana remaining. Yeah, so if you have any trouble with him now on this first phase, then just keep practicing, guys, like I say. 
The second phase is a lot more annoying, so you want to try to save all your mana, all your good stuff for the second phase. But the reason I use my transformation on the first phase is because you don't really get much chance to use it on the second phase, you probably just waste it all. So yeah, it will do long combos, which is a lot of attack, a lot of damage, sorry. So yeah, make sure you have to finish this combo before you attack, unless you've, it's a combo where you've got a, a brief window to do like one attack and then dodge again for the next chain of the combo. But yeah, once you knock him to half HP, he'll enter the second phase. Yeah, so this second phase, he'll transform. And if you play this right, so what I do to begin with is I go into Cloud Step, I summon my monkeys, and they start charging my charge attack. Now I run around and avoid him, and after about two or three charges, he's going to fall over for a good few seconds. That's it. Now unleash onto him, guys. Now hopefully he can take most of his HP down. So charge attack, immobilize, get a combo in, and then do spirit attack. Yes, spirit attack, your wind tamer attack, get another combo in, and hopefully you've almost finished him off, guys. Are oh, so close to finishing him off then. Yes, now he's going to do that annoying attack. Yeah, so this attack goes on for about a minute. And as you can see, I've... Wait for it. One more one more hit. Yeah, so he's dead. He's actually dead now, but he will not die until he's finished his whole attack animation. And like I say, it goes on for about a minute. And it's very annoying to dodge. This is why I like to save my mana. Because if he's doing this attack, he can kind of obviously use Cloud Step to avoid it. Yeah, he'll kind of... When he does his attack, first he'll swim around as that kind of like little whale. Then he'll turn into this rhino. And he'll summon loads of other rhinos. It's like a little stampede. And then afterwards he'll transform back and charge at you. And then after that he'll fall over and that attack is finished. Yeah, so here he comes. There it is. He's fallen over. So that's that attack finished. Goes on for ages. And if you kill him during that attack, you have to wait for the whole thing to finish. And you can quite easily get killed. But you normally have to attack him once. Once the attack is finished, to finish him off, guys. Uh, but yeah, once killed him, you'll get Find Gold Thread um, times two, Bloodstained Needle, and a Curios. Yeah, you get Jade Moon Rabbit, and of course, some uh, Will. Now, in that chest, you get some random materials, and then come over here, guys, and rest at the shrine. And this will be the end of the video, pretty much. Just going to do a little bit of upgrading, uh, not upgrading, but our leveling. And you've got a new armor set available. Not going to craft it yet. I'm just showing you. And come into self advance, reignite sparks, and you want to unlock. Go into foundation, feather light, and bold move times two. Basically, we'll start unlocking all the stamina abilities. Right, and that'll be it for that one, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on part 19.